I will put a marker in the ground right now and say that Wizards of the Coast is going to sign on to that project. I think that is one of their only roots out of the mess that they're in right now. All right, so I got to I got to address this. Um if you haven't watched the full uh, sit down with Ryan Dancy from yesterday's uh Roll for Combat live stream, you need to go watch it in full. Um and shout out to the Roll for Combat guys for doing this. Um because they've been having some great sit downs with Ryan and other people during this whole OGL crisis scenario. Um and being able to have a you know, conversations with people who have been at the forefront of not just this battle, but also back in the day with the original open gaming license. It's been a treasure trove for someone like me who's been approaching this from a, I kind of understand how things are working scenario because I've done business enough in my life and I've done publishing and everything else, but also being able to, to have conversations with other people who have more expertise, which always leads to better conversations and better understanding of everything. And that's never a bad thing, but, um, Shout out to those guys for putting together all of these live streams and everything else. There's a link down below to the full video that you should go watch. It's a couple hours long, I believe a little over two hours. I only watched the first 30 minutes yesterday because that's what I had time for. I'm going to be sinking my teeth into the rest of it and putting out a sort of overview of some of the things that I thought were most important to the overall conversation that's happening around everything. But the point I wanted to talk about here is what he was just pointing out, because there is a better explanation here as he goes into it. We're going to, we're going to walk through that and listen to uh, Rand Dancy's take on things. But essentially um, the idea here is that if wizards of the coast is smart, they'll sign up for the ORC. And I know um, that prediction a lot of people might shake their head at, the, at that and be like, there's there's no way that they're going to do that. Well, under the current management, they might not. You know, I don't know what exactly is going on with the conversations right now between Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast, or even just at the top of Wizards of the Coast. But I do know what was interesting is looking at the Astro Fox um you know, a uh, pitch that was given last year when they wanted to spin Wizards of the Coast off into its own thing and separate it out because they didn't believe that it should follow the the, the whole brand identity structure that um, Hasbro's been using for all their other projects. That conversation looks a lot different in the light of the current situation as in comparison to last year, for example, um, so let's let's listen to this a little bit more because I think it's a great it's a great insight into why would Wizards of the Coast want to sign up in the first place? What what benefits them um, in terms of the ORC and joining all these other people? Because um, Ryan's got some really good thoughts on this here, so let's let's dive in. Wow, you think or you think? I'll put it this way. I wouldn't yep. be stunned. I would be maybe surprised, but I actually see that. I, I agree with you. Is if they sign on to it, yep. and if they say, "Look, we messed up. We're part of the yep. community. We're yep. all singing kumbaya together. We want to yep. join you. We're yep. coming over to the light side." You know, yep. it's like they have we, to we do wanna, it. <laughs> we want to seat at the table when the terms of the license are being discussed. All right, that's that's really interesting. So first and foremost. Um, as Steven is saying here, doing it as a way to placate the masses and saying, you know, look, guys, we screwed up. We want to come back. We want to get back in your good graces. You know, remember that the last reporting that was done last week said that over 1500 companies had joined Paizo's initiative. That's a lot, a lot of third party publishers. And if you look at a lot of the names, Cobalt Press, Green Rona, and so on and so forth. These are companies that have been publishing third-party D&D content for a long time. And for them to suddenly, you know, turn tail and abandon Wizards of the Coast, that is a, a long-term sting. It's not just a quick little scratch. Um, that's a wound that is going to be leaving a scar for years to come. So the idea that Wizards of the Coast could turn around and say, we're sorry... And we're going to join the ORC as a way of getting back into everyone's good graces. That's one thing. But as Ryan says here, well, it's it's more than that. Because if they did join, 
it gives them a seat at the table. They're a big enough gorilla, even as they are now, that they have a little bit of, you know, they can, they could, they could sit down and say, we want to join the ORC with the caveat, you know, we want that seat at the table. And theoretically, everyone's being given a seat at the table, but they also are in a position where they could say, come on, guys. You know, we want to seat at the table. We want to be able to help make decisions. Let's let's get involved. They could absolutely do that, and it would be good for them. It would absolutely be good for Wizards of the Coast to do so, beyond simply getting back in the good graces of the community. But let's continue on with this uh, with this discussion here. Before it is mm-hmm. finalized, like the time to participate is now, not six months from now. I don't know if they're going to do it now. That's a good point too. Um, because they're in the middle of drafting everything right now. So um, they did say they're going to have that first draft out in February. It would be interesting to see um, if if they were to join, would they be doing that now, or would they wait until the language of the first draft is, is available? Now, while Paizo has said that the language of that first draft draft will be available to the publishing partners first. Um, I don't know if that includes someone like little old me. I don't know if they're going to include that in the Discord or not. Um, I really don't in the ORC Discord. Hopefully they do. I would imagine they would. Um, At some point, that language will get leaked out there into the public. And so Wizards of the Coast may just be waiting to see what that language is going to look like, and then they may decide that they want to join the initiative based on what that first draft looks like, and then come on and say, hey guys, we saw this draft, we think it looks good, but what about these areas here, here, and here? I don't know if it's in this part of the video or later. Um, Ryan is going to bring up a, a, a an important part of the, the key conversation, which is that the um, and he may bring it up here in a minute. I don't want to get ahead of myself too much, but there was a part of this conversation where he talks about how one of the things the OGL 1.0 and 1.0a doesn't have in it are any provisions for software. And that's one of the things that Wizards of the Coast apparently really wanted to figure out with their 1.2, right? Or that 1.1, 1.2 is how to figure out the the software and the video game and the VTT and the NFT and all that stuff that that, that, that language that wasn't in the original OGL. And if they get involved with the ORC now, they have a chance to help um, get language in there about software, which benefits them as well as everyone else at the table. It was very interesting to think about. Right. I, I feel like it is part of their route out of this wilderness they put themselves into is to basically rejoin the community mm-hmm. as a good player and be a part of a broader thing other than just themselves. Right now, they're on an island all by themselves, and that's got to be very lonely. It does have to and be also very all the Walled developers garden, they've been trying to build. Yeah, and all the yeah. developers for, for WotC, you know, they're all... They're all in Seattle, and they're all very friendly with the people right. that are doing Orc. You know these. Yeah, that's right. You know these people all know each other. It's not that yeah, big a community. Exactly right. so. That's a very good point too. Um, when you start thinking about, um, it was the same thing when when I was working out of Austin, Texas. You know, game development and tabletop development. You tend to get, even though it's it's a it's a wider industry. When you look at where some of these major hubs are, whether it's Seattle or Austin. Um, Edmonton, so on and so forth. Um, those communities of people, they might all work at different companies, but at the end of the day, a lot of those employees and a lot of the the everybody, um, everybody goes to the same gatherings and the same social events and everything else because that community is fairly tight knit um, across. It, it's not about who do you work for; it's more about we're all into tabletop. We all love RPGs. You know what I mean? It's a very interesting thing to think about. The, the thing that's really interesting for them, for Wizards, is that one of the defects in the OGL is how poorly it deals with the question of software. Mm-hmm. And- this is where he talks about it. This is the point I was getting. I had to, I had to get ahead a little bit in the video to, <laughs> to find this point. But this is where he brings up the, the point I was uh, discussing earlier, where the software conversation here. And that is also the exact same problem the exact same reason is in the CCBY4 license. So if they join the ORC participation process and they have a voice in that license, maybe they can get a reasonable and understandable mechanism built into it to handle software, Mm -hmm. um, which would be great for everybody. Um, So yeah, there is at least some upside for them in joining a new licensing regime if they can address that software question. 
So I think that's that's an important point, and we'll kind of use that as our closing point here in the video, is that the ORC, as it is being formed right now, has a lot of upside for everyone involved. And it would behoove Wizards of the Coast to be a part of that conversation rather than being on the outside. Because at the moment, which he mentioned earlier, they're like on an island out in the middle and they're all by themselves. It's very lonely. Um, they've got walls up around the island. Like no one, no one can sail in, no one can sail out. Um, but the problem with that is that being on that deserted island is that eventually whatever supplies they have on the island are going to run out. And they're going to need to export, import, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, but you can't do that if you've, if you've got your walls up and you're not willing to work with anybody. So getting back into the good graces of the community is one good reason to join the ORC, but the other is that they have a chance to sit down at the table and help define the license in a way that not only benefits them, which is one of the reasons you would want to be involved, a selfish reasons, but that's why you get involved. You, you, maybe you want to make sure that it's good for everyone at the end of the day, but also make sure it's good for you. So it's a win-win. You want a win-win scenario. You don't want a win-lose or a lose-win. You want there to be a clear win-win scenario. And it could be one. I don't know whether or not this could actually happen. I don't know if Wizards of the Coast would actually agree to join the ORC. I think Ryan Dancy's uh, got a, some very good points about why it would be... Um, a good idea for them and whether or not it happens is another thing but again it's it's a great conversation um if you haven't already done so like i said i've got the link to this full video down below if you've got it's two it's a little, just two or two hours and four minutes is what it says so it's a little over two hours i only watched the first 20 minutes 25 minutes or so as i said earlier this particular section of the discussion starts around the nine minute and 45 second mark and is right here i'm wrapping it up at the 13 11 mark so we you know we're we're only covering a several minute section of the video so kudos to the roll for combat guys for getting this up and having ryan on the show again i love their show make sure you like subscribe hit the bell icon over on their channel so you never miss a live stream and an update when they have it and of course as far as my content goes if you liked my take on things please consider subscribing uh, hit that bell icon, all those good things. Support if you can with super chats, super stickers, memberships. Don't forget the Patreon page for our tabletop world, point and click adventure game and fantasy series. And I'll see everybody in the next video. Till then, everybody, stay safe and happy gaming.